Good afternoon, students, and welcome to Unit 2. Woohoo! So we're going to start off this unit by talking about expressions versus equations. And also in this video, we're going to talk about the different parts of an equation because it's really understand to know those for when we start to solve our equations. So um, I'm going to use two different colors to kind of illustrate the difference between expressions and equations. If you like to color code, maybe you could do this as well. If you don't care about color coding, you don't need to do that. So um, I would suggest uh, to kind of set up your notebook page so it's good to go. Um, I would split your page in half, okay? Just to kind of give you a little preview, split your page in half like this, and then the top half split in half again. So like there's kind of like two fourths. And then I would kind of maybe take three or four lines from the top and then draw another line because we're going to kind of define expressions and equations and then put examples here. So go ahead if you need to pause and set up your page, go ahead and do so. All right, let's get into the difference between expressions and equations. So expressions are just math phrases. They are just math phrases phrases. So we have two different kinds of expressions. We could have what's called a numerical expression. So if I have like three plus two, or if I have negative four plus five, these are called numerical expressions. And the reason why they're called numerical expressions, I'm going to abbreviate expressions EXPR. The reason why they're called numerical expressions is because they involve numbers and only numbers. There's nothing else involved. But we also have something called algebraic expressions. So like if I have X plus six, or if I have negative four plus A, these are examples of algebraic expressions. OK, and the reason why they're called algebraic expressions is because they have what are called variables, the letters X and A. Um, you can kind of think about it as like algebraic kind of sounds like alphabet. And because they have letters, it's like alphabet. Um, and this is the number six. Sorry if it looks like the letter B. That's a number six. So an expression is a math phrase, such as the numerical expressions and the algebraic expressions. Um, the difference between an expression and an equation is that equations show two equal expressions. They show two equal expressions. So for example, if I have three plus two is equal to five, I am showing two things that are equal, right? Five is on this side and three plus two, which makes five is on this side. Um, or if I have negative four plus five equals positive one, <laughs> this is um, showing two things that are equal to each other, okay? So these are called numerical equations because again, and I'm going to abbreviate equations EQ, uh, EQN, um, S, EQNS. If you want to write out the full word, you can't. I'm just abbreviating. So these are numerical equations. These are numerical equations because they only involve numbers. We also have, kind of in comparison to algebraic expressions, we also have algebraic equations, and they would look something like this. X plus 6 equals 10, or negative 4 plus A equals 21. These are called algebraic expressions because, again, they involve those variables. I'm sorry, algebraic equations, not algebraic expressions. These are called algebraic equations because they involve these variables. So you'll notice the biggest difference between equations and expressions is the equal sign. At a glance, that's how you can tell very simply if something is an equation versus an expression. Equations have the equal sign because they show two equivalent things. Um, expressions do not. Expressions only have like one side of the equation, okay? Um, so that's the difference between expressions and equations. Um, it's important because we want to make sure we're using the correct vocabulary. So when I am solving an equation, I am looking at something that has an equal sign and I'm trying to solve for the variable um, or I'm trying to solve for the missing piece. If I am evaluating an expression, what will happen is sometimes I'll tell you what the variable equals and you have to go plug it in and then solve the problem. So for example, like X plus six, let's say I said, okay, evaluate the expression X plus six when X is equal to two. Well, that means you go plug in two for X and then you would solve the problem two plus six to get your answer. So it's important that you understand the difference. <clears throat> so if you need to take a moment to pause and catch up with the writing, go ahead and do so.
The next part of this video, we are going to talk about the different parts of an equation. So here is an example of what's called a two-step equation, because when we learn how to solve these, it's going to take us two steps to solve. But this equation has a variety of different parts to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use arrows and define what each of these parts are. Okay. So first off, <clears throat> we're going to start off with 29. Let's start off with something very simple. So I'm going to draw an arrow like this over here. In this equation, 3a plus 5 equals 29. 29 is the solution. <clears throat> 29 is one side of the equal sign. Whatever is on the other side of the equal sign has to be equivalent to 29. <clears throat> so we can think about this as the solution to the problem. <clears throat> okay? The next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the letter A. And when we use... <clears throat> um, a letter in math. There's a variety of different letters that we can use. We typically use X, but we could use A, B, C, like it really doesn't matter. But if you see a letter, this is called a variable. And the reason why it's called a variable is because the value of it can vary. So some things you need to know about the variable are it's unknown, meaning we don't know what it's equivalent to, but we're going to solve to figure it out. It's kind of like a puzzle. Um, and this is like what we're solving for. Okay. This is what we are working towards answering. Okay. Is trying to solve what this variable is equivalent to. So I'm going to underline the word variable as well. Okay. Um, and then you'll notice we have a number right next to the variable. Okay. This number right next to the variable, this has kind of like a fancy math word. Okay. The fancy math word is coefficient. And this is how it's spelled, okay? The coefficient, I like to think about this as the variable's BFF. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, like, they're, like, joined at the hip. They're, like, besties. They're right next to each other. They go everywhere. They eat lunch together. They have a lot of classes together. They hang out outside after school. Like, they're really tight with each other. They're literally right next to each other, okay? Um, and you'll notice, as we've talked about, anytime a number is right next to something and there's no mathematical symbol in between, this means multiplication, okay? So a coefficient is what we are multiplying times our variable, okay? So this best friend is being multiplied times the variable, okay? Um, and something else with coefficients, I'm going to kind of draw an arrow going up over here, <clears throat> is we can have a negative coefficient. Like I could have negative 6a, okay? The coefficient in this problem or in this expression, I guess I should say, is negative 6, okay? Is negative 6. Um, so a coefficient could be positive or negative. So here's an example of like how a negative one would look, okay? So we have our coefficient, our variable, and the last piece of the equation that we have. I'm going to kind of draw the arrow to go all the way down here. The number on its own, the number five, this is called a constant. This is called a constant, okay? I like to think of this number as the variable's buddy. That's why I'm putting that in quotation marks, okay? Because they are on the same side with the variable, but they're not best friends with the variable. They're not like joined at the hip, like the coefficient, but they're friendly. They're like near each other. They hang out. Maybe they have one or two classes. Maybe they go to each other's birthday parties, but they're not best friends. Okay. This I'm using the word buddy and best friend because when we talk about solving equations, um, I like to use kind of buddy and BFF to help you remember the order in which we solve equations. But the constant is uh, the buddy. It's the number on its own. Okay, so this is always just a number on its own. Okay, so any sort of time we see a number on its own, that's a constant. <clears throat> okay, um, and when we look at the different parts of an equation, okay, so when I look at like 3a, 5, and 29, okay, these are called terms. And that's going to come into play in our next video when we talk about combining like terms. So this is a term. So if I were to have you tell me how many terms were in this equation, you look at kind of like what's in between the mathematical symbols. You count how many things are in between the mathematical symbols. So we have 3a, 5, and 29. So that's three terms in this equation. 
Okay. So, um, I would suggest you take a moment to pause, write down anything you need to write down and then go back and kind of <clears throat> make sure you understand the different vocabulary that we call the parts of an equation. Because when we solve, these are the words that I'm going to be using. These are going to going to be the words that I encourage you to use. Um, so it's really important you understand understand the difference between a coefficient, a variable, solution, constant, and you understand what a term is. Um, <clears throat> if you need to pause to copy down, you are more than welcome to. If you are good, I am going to show you the practice questions for this lesson. So the practice questions for this lesson, you only have three. Um, and here is what they are. Okay. So the first question is, I would like for you to write a numerical expression. Go back and look at some of the examples of what I refer to as numerical expressions and write your own. The second one is you're going to identify the different parts of the equation 6 plus 7a equals 21. So identify what is the solution, the constant, the coefficient, and the variable. And then in number three, you have four minus negative 2a is equivalent to 15. And the question is, if you think the coefficient is two or negative two and why, okay? Um, if you think the coefficient is two or negative two and why that's the case, okay? Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down um, so we can talk about them in class. Make sure that you check your answers in the table of contents. And as always, I hope you all have a really great day. Bye.